37A is dealing with the line as a locus of points. And the first thing we need to do is talk about what a locus is. Uh, a locus is, uh, is once again another word we've derived from the Greeks. And it really means, uh, I can define a circle that way, the locus of points that are a certain distance from a point. That would be a, a, a circle. Or I could say a locus is uh, the, the set of points between two other, or the set of all the, the individual points between two other points and extending in both directions. So locus just means the set of numbers we're talking about. The line is a locus, and what we're going to be working with here is uh, a, a, we're finding the equation of the line that is the same distance from any two given points. Now, the question that the, the, for the example, and I did put the distance formula up here just as a reminder of what that is because we are going to be using it here in just a moment. But finding the equation of a line, find the equation of a line that is equidistant from the points 4 comma 2, negative 2 comma negative 3, write the answer in slope intercept form. So in the back of our mind, we would have to keep in, in there that slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. That I want the equation of that line. Now, I realize that here's my 4, 2, here's my negative 2, negative 3. This is the line that passes through them. Now, if I'm, I'm paying attention to it, I realize that any two lines going from here and here, where they meet, as long as this line is the same as this line, I would have an infinite set of these lines that would be equal. In fact, the distance from here to here and from here to here have to be equal as well for it to be equidistant. Once again, there's that word. And equidistant means the same distance. So these two would be the same, these two are the same as each other, these two are the same as each other, and it would just continue in both directions. Well, rather than do that, we're just going to say, let's pick that point right there. I don't know what it is, but it really becomes irrelevant what that point is in just a moment. So we're going to call that point x comma y. I don't know what x is, I don't know what y is. But if I could find out what the distance of this line is, and the distance of this line, I would have an equation that would tell me how far away they were. And once again, not a real distance because it doesn't really matter because there's an infinite number of answers. Well, an infinite number of answers going in a straight line sounds like the equation of a line, which is good because they asked for an equation of a line in the problem. Now, so I remember what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to say, hey, the distance from this point to this one is the same as the distance from this point to this one. So I'm going to put that up there. The distance from 4 comma 2, there it goes, to x comma y equals the distance from negative 2 comma negative 3 to x comma y. So I know that these two distances are the same. Then I look at it and say, well, if I only had a formula for dealing with the distance between any two given points. But wait, I do. The distance formula. So I just say distance equals x2, there we go minus 4 squared plus y2 minus 2 squared. We've been dealing with the distance formula and finding the distance between two points. We've always just had the two points given to us. This one we're going to leave a variable in it. I go ahead and work that out. Well, x minus 4 squared is the same as x minus 4 times x minus 4, and y minus 2 squared is y minus 2, y minus 2. If you can do it in your head and you can skip down to the bottom, that's great. If you need to, go ahead and use either FOIL or left to, my, or left to right method. x times x is x squared. Uh, x times uh, 4 is, uh, negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x. Negative 4, negative 4, positive 16. I move over to my y's. y times y, y squared y times negative 2, negative 2y. Negative 2 times y, negative 2y. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. I start adding some like terms here. Negative 4, negative 4 is negative 8. Negative uh, 2y, negative 2y is negative 4y. And I end up with this formula right here. I'm ready to go and move over to the other one because I don't have anything else I can do with it. So I move and I say, well, what's the difference between negative 2 uh, comma negative 3 all the way to x comma y. Well, I'm, for sake of time, and that'll uh, make this too boring, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And you can see the steps that I accomplished here. If you need to pause the video to, to see these steps, that's fine. I said the distance from x and negative 2. x minus negative 2. There you go. And y minus a negative 3. And there it is. Well, a negative negative makes it a positive. And I end up with x plus 2 and x plus 3, both are squared. I wrote them double, just like I did on this side here, writing them here. 
I then multiply that by FOIL or other expansion methods, combine my like terms, and I end up with this. Now, at this point, I have a distance equals and a distance equals. But remember where we started? We said the distance from one is the same as the distance from the other. So I can really just set them equal to each other. And there's where an equal sign here. So I took the two sides of the problem and I combined them. This is not difficult math. It is keeping up with details. There's a lot of spots where you can make mistakes. So I'm going to be very careful as I look at this and realize that if I have the root of something equaling the root of something, it didn't really matter what is underneath here. If I said uh, the root of x equals the root of y, I could square both sides and say x equals y. And that's what I did. So I squared both, I squared both sides. When I did so, I look at it and realize, oh, I squared them and they're gone, but I have x squared equals x squared. So I subtracted x squared from both sides. I have y squared equaling y squared. I subtracted them and I'm left with just these terms, which is good because then I don't have to factor. I've got a, a linear equation. And I realize that I start adding my like terms. So when I do so, I move the 6y over to this side, subtracting 6y, making it a negative 10y. I add 8x to this side, making it a 12x. And then I also move the 20 over to here by subtracting 20 from both sides and leaving a negative 7. I'm almost in y uh, equals format, not quite y uh, intercept yet. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 10. When I do so, I get negative 12 over 10 and a positive 7 over 10. A negative and a negative, there's a positive. My 12 and 10 reduces to 6 and 5. My 7 and 10 stay the, st the same. Now, is this a logical answer? Y equals negative six-fifths of X plus 7 over 10. Well, 7 over 10 is less than 1. I've got a big fat line right here, but if it wasn't so overly fat, that's about 7 tenths. That looks good for my Y intercept. And is it a negative slope going down 6 for every 5 in the run? And that, I would say, yeah, that is. And this is the equation of the line here. And that line is equidistant from these two points, this one here and this one here. Always the same distance away from the two points. So once again, just to recap what we did here, we realized that the distance was the same, so we set them equal to each other. We found the distance from the one point to our unknown, then from our other point to the unknown on both sides. We set them equal to each other because that's where we started. We canceled the square roots by squaring both sides. We got rid of the x squareds by subtracting them, got rid of the y squareds by subtracting them, combined our like terms, got it a y isolated onto the one side of the equation, which is my y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. There's my y equals mx plus b right there. So these problems, don't let the line as a locus sound scary or equidistant from these points. You can, you can find any uh, uh, point, two points, and find the line that's equidistant. Remember that it will be exactly a right angle to the line uh, that passes between the two of them. Uh, that would be another way we could solve this as far as if we wanted to. We could have said this line, find the equation of this line, and then find one perpendicular to it passing through the midpoint. It would have given us the same answer. I think it would have been a few more steps, but also there's always more than one way to do something in algebra.